Welcome to Capital Quality's webinar on productivity. To provide ongoing support for the Capital Quality on-site administrators, the Office of the State Superintendent of Education, in partnership with Hurley & Associates, is implementing a series of community of practice for principals, center directors, and home care providers. This community of practice series is part of an ongoing effort to build capacity and knowledge as it relates to addressing the 10 quality indicators articulated in Capital Quality's Continuous Quality Improvement Plan. This webinar is an edited recording and presentation of the community of practice conducted on Friday, May 19th, and Saturday, May 20th of 2017. This community of practice provided participants with a series of research-based practices and activities as it relates to productivity as defined by the pre-K class assessment in a child care setting. It also afforded participants an opportunity to meet and engage in team and relationship building activities with fellow capital quality participants and quality facilitators. This is the third presentation in a series of community of practices designed to build the skills and competency level of providers participating in capital quality. Over the next few months, we are going to deep dive into each class dimension within the realm of teacher-child interactions. Developmentally appropriate practices will be embedded throughout each session. This month's session will provide capital quality community updates and an overview of productivity. Additionally, it will provide an overview of upcoming professional development opportunities identified by Kids Comprehensive. Lastly, the community of practice includes an overview of upcoming community of practices and next steps for the capital quality community. During April's community of practice, we really focused on teacher-child interactions. Inner City Fund, also known as ICF, provided an overview of the role of literacy and language in early childhood development. ICF, along with participants, also engaged in activities that supported an increased understanding of teacher-child interactions. Please watch April's community of practice for more information on teacher-child interactions. It is available on the Aussie website. Over the last few months, we have been working towards points of quality. You have completed the Healthy Tot survey. You have reviewed your existing environments against our environmental survey, reviewed your class, iters, and figures data, and are in the process of developing attendance policies and adopting revised mission statements. You've accomplished a lot. As we mentioned during April's meeting, one of the things we really want to do is to highlight and honor those providers giving Capital Quality 100% of their effort for the first quarter. Kudos to all providers who have successfully completed the first quarter goals and targets and meeting with your assigned facilitator regularly. Your assigned quality facilitator will provide you with your incentive over the next few weeks. We know that many of you had had extenuating circumstances that prevented you from completing the many benchmarks or tasks within QuickBase or meeting with your QF consistently. As you continue to move towards quality and meet regularly with your assigned QF, we will continue to monitor your progress towards quality and will provide incentive cards as benchmarks are met. What is productivity? Productive classrooms consist of clearly defined learning activities that are provided for students throughout the class period. According to Teachstone, the developers of the class, with productivity, the classroom feels like a well-oiled machine where everyone knows what is expected of them and how to go about doing it. In productive classrooms, little to no instructional time is lost 
due to unclear task expectations, lack of materials, time spent waiting around, or extended attention to managerial tasks, such as checking work, collecting permission slips, handing out papers, etc. Teachstone and leading research indicates that highly productive classrooms provide students with a steady stream of learning activities throughout each class period with few to little lost instructional opportunities. Time spent on learning activities and instruction is maximized. The classroom is well organized. In a pre-K classroom, this includes time spent on transitioning to centers and activities and time spent during snack and meals. For infants and toddlers, it is rhyming and singing songs during diaper changing and hand washing. We want to be intentional in all aspects of programming, including transitions, snack, diaper changing, etc. Not just during story time or circle. Intentional teaching reduces occurrences of misbehavior in children and allows providers to identify student needs more rapidly. Ann Epstein from the National Association for the Education of Young Children, NACI, describes an intentional teacher as one who uses their knowledge, judgment, and experience to organize meaningful learning experiences for children that they serve. Intentionality, as described by NACI, is being planful and deliberate, knowing what you're doing and why, and being able to explain it to others. Having a vision as an educator, as an administrator, and as a professional. As an instructional leader and director, your role is to assist your teachers in developing strategies and tools to be productive at all times throughout the entire day. Think about the role productivity plays in the brain development of a young child. Did you know that 85% of all brain development occurs before age five? Productivity measures classroom organization. Within the class, it measures four critical areas, maximizing learning time, routines, transitions, and teacher preparation. Although not clearly defined in the iters are and the figures are, productivity is included using different terminology in the following indicators. Listening and talking, indicators 12 and 13. Interaction, indicators 25 and 26. Program structure, indicators 29, 30, 31, and 32. And personal care routine, indicator nine. Think for a moment. What does productivity look like in your classroom, in your centers? How does it look across the ages of the children that you serve? How does it look in an infant or a toddler classroom? What about a pre-K classroom? Take a moment to write down a few thoughts of how your teachers can become more productive in their classrooms. Think about how teachers can become more productive while performing typical activities with their children, such as during snack time, center transition, diapering, or even taking a walk outside. I'll give you a few seconds to write down and record your thoughts. Okay. What did you think of? Did you think of activities such as reviewing rhyming words and sounds with your children as they go from center to center? Perhaps you thought of having intentional conversations during snack time, or maybe you thought of reading a book to the infant while the infant drank the bottle. These are all examples of how teachers can become 
more productive while performing typical activities throughout the day. Let's dig deeper and examine in greater detail examples of productivity. Let's watch a video on efficient management of a routine, video 30 from the My Teachstone Resource Library. As you watch the video, think about the following questions. Question one, how did the teacher maximize learning time? Question two, how did the teacher demonstrate a routine? And question three, how did the teacher demonstrate that she was prepared? Watch the video and place a pause on this recording and return once you've completed. Okay, you have watched a video on efficient management of a routine. Please, on a piece of paper, jot down a response to the following questions. Question one. How did the teacher maximize learning time? I will give you a few seconds to record your thoughts. Okay, did you write down that the teacher provided a puzzle activity so that all children have something to do while individual children brushed their teeth and washed their hands? Did you notice anything else? Question two, how did the teacher demonstrate a routine? I will give you a few seconds to record your thoughts. Okay, did you write down that the teacher provided clear instructions so that children know what to do? For example, you heard, Fatima, now you can brush your teeth and hey Zeus, can you help one of your friends with the puzzle? Did you also notice that the children did not wander the room and each one had something to do? Final question, how did the teacher demonstrate that she was prepared? I will give you a few seconds to record your thoughts. Okay. Did you write down that the teachers had all the materials set up and ready for the children to either brush their teeth or work on the puzzles? What would be some challenges within your centers in implementing a similar structure? Think about it. During each session, we will touch upon and discuss developmentally appropriate practices as it relates to age appropriateness and individual appropriateness. According to NACI, there are three core principles of developmentally appropriate practices. Principle number one, knowing about child development and learning. Knowing what is typical at each age and stage of early development is crucial. This knowledge based on research helps us to decide which experiences are best for children's learning and development. Principle number two, knowing what is individually appropriate. What we learn about specific children helps us teach and care for each child as an individual. By continually observing children's play and interaction with the physical environment and others, we learn about each child's interests, abilities, and developmental progress. And finally, principle number three, knowing what is culturally important. We must make an effort to get to know the children's families and learn about the values, expectations, and factors that shape their lives at home and in their communities. This background information helps us provide meaningful, relevant, and respectful learning experiences for each child and their family. Did we accomplish everything we set out to accomplish? Did we discuss productivity from birth to five? Did we discuss the alignment of class, itters, and fickers? as it relates to productivity? 
did we discuss typical developmentally appropriate practices as it relates to productivity and teacher-child interactions? And finally, did we provide information on strategies to help teachers become more productive at all times? We understand that change doesn't happen overnight and it doesn't come easy, but we are here to help. Your assigned facilitator will work with you each week to develop strategies to enhance teacher-child interactions and develop ways to create more productive classrooms. Kids Comprehensive, the organization responsible for implementing the child care resource and referral system, publishes a quarterly catalog for providers outlining current professional development opportunities. The spring catalog is currently available. Please visit the link provided to download a copy of the most current catalog. Reminder to all providers. All providers must participate in training on the 12 indicators for health and safety by September 2017. Early Childhood Share DC is an online sharing platform for providers designed to help providers in sharing up-to-date knowledge and information. Over 1,000 classroom and administration resources plus vendor discounts are currently available on the site. To access the site, please visit www.ecsharedc.org. Establish a profile and a team member from ECSHARE-DC will contact you to complete registration. You will need to have your center license on hand to register. Quality facilitators will continue to support you in your completion of Capital Quality's 10 elements included on a continuous quality improvement plan. Previous community practice videos are currently available on the OSSI website, as well as other Capital Quality information. June's community of practice will focus on detailed lesson planning and meaningful observations. It will be held June 23rd and 24th of this year from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. All videos of the sessions will be posted on the OSSI webpage. We are always available. Please follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Visit the OSSI website for up-to-date information. Also, please feel free to contact Katherine Kagera, Rashida Brown, or Pilla Parker for questions related to capital quality.